Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle educational website. That website presents eight self-study lessons, self-improvement lessons. And I want to offer you a video today that relates to lesson four about relationships and lesson six, which relates to improving family relationships. Family relationships are special, right? Think about the members of your family. If you don't have any significant problems with any of them, any of the adults, then this video might not be of much value to you. If you have what you term significant problems with one or more adult members of your family, particularly your parents or siblings or grandparents, then you might find this video helpful. I'm going to make another video about parent-child relationships, so they are not included here. Okay. What makes relations with family members special? Why are they particularly apt to be stressful? I think a large part of it is because we, since childhood, we are trained to have special expectations of the members of the people that we call our family. Uh, genetic members and, to a lesser extent, perhaps, in-laws. We have special ex expectations that they're supposed to love us, no matter what. Uh, they and we are supposed to exchange loyalty in the face of competition or hardship. We're supposed to stand by each other, right? We're supposed to respect each other, uh, despite some reasons not to. If we're family members, we should at least respect each other should. Notice the should. We also expect each other, among all the relationships in our lives, we expect our family members to support us where other friends or acquaintances might not. We expect our relatives to stand by us and that we should stand by them in hard times. Do you agree? Were you taught to do this? Another expectation we have of our family members usually, is that they will accept us, warts and all, wrinkles and all, bad habits and all, they'll accept us. These things are important, especially the last one, because a fundamental need that children and adults have is the primal need to belong. Would you agree that you need a family to feel that you are a part of. You're accepted, you're known, you're valued, hopefully you're loved. You belong. Think of other groups that you don't belong to. Notice the difference in how that feels. Belonging is a primal need tied to our sense of personal security. So one thing that stresses us if we have trouble with our family relationships that can hinder or erase our sense of belonging, that lowers our personal sense of security. So that makes our needs to be on good relations, uh, good footing with our relatives, unusually high compared to other people. If you have what you term significant problems, with one or more of your adult relatives, starting with your parents, your siblings, and your grandparents. What kind of problems, by the way, am I referring to? At the top of the list is disrespect, about frustration, distrust, dislike, indifference, envy, jealousy. Any of those ring a bell? How about excessive guilt? shame. Those are fundamental problems with any relationship, but with uh, adult family members, they're particularly galling and troublesome. Would you agree? So if you have any one of these problems with one of your adult family members, here are some possibilities. There are some things you can do. The very first thing, as with any relationship problem, assess yourself for psychological wounds. My experience as a therapist is that 
major problems among relatives and with all other people stem from two things. One or both troubled people, conflicted people, have major psychological wounds they inherited in their childhood. Often they don't know about these wounds, they don't want to know them, and they don't know what to do about them. So accept, uh, assess yourself for psychological wounds. If you have them, you're probably half of the relationship problem with your relative. Secondly, assess the person you're having difficulty with for psychological wounds with compassion, not blame, not scorn. They didn't choose these wounds. They don't want them. They don't know what to do about them. If you and they are wounded, those are larger problems than distrust, disrespect, dislike. Work on, prioritize, reducing your wounds and consider alerting them to their wounds. You're not responsible for them. You may not choose to. It's really up to them. So assess yourself and your relative, your parent, your grandparent, your sister, your brother. Assess you for psychological wounds. Take responsibility for reducing yours if you have some. There's a video relative to lesson one on YouTube that shows you more about wounds, another one about how to reduce these wounds. Uh, the articles in lesson one in my website, sfhelp.org, give you a lot of information about wounds and how to reduce them. The second thing you can do in general is to upgrade your skill and ability at communicating and problem solving with anybody. Lesson two in my website gives you a great deal of practical factual information on how to learn and use seven powerful communication skills you almost certainly were not taught when you were a child by your parents or your teachers. Most people can't name these skills, can you? If you can't, you're probably not using them. These skills, of course, apply to problems with anybody, but they're especially useful in unraveling and man uh, managing problems with parents, grandparents, and siblings. Incidentally, problems with mates deserves an entirely separate video. I'm ex excluding them from what I'm saying here, although much of what I'm saying applies. So upgrade your, per your communication skills, particularly assertion, listening, and problem solving. If your troublesome relative doesn't know these skills, invite them to upgrade their skills. They may or may not. It's not your job to teach them. It's theirs. The third thing you can do to reduce uh, troubles with key relatives. Examine your expectations. If you're still hanging on to childhood expectations, example, I have to please my parents. As an independent mature adult, no, you don't. Um, if you displease your mother or your father, that does not make you a bad son or daughter or a bad person. It makes you someone who's got your own rights, your own feelings, your own opinions, and the right to be different from your parents. You no longer have to please them. It's nice if you can, but you don't have to as you did as a child. You also don't have to obey your parents. If you are ruled, if you're psychologically wounded, and ruled by a false self, when you're in the presence of forceful, aggressive, or judgmental parents, you may regress into a state of childhood anxiety and fear and worry and guilt. Um, that's a sure sign that you're ruled by a false self. That's a bigger problem than having difficulty with your parents. Okay? So clarify your expectations and upgrade childhood expectations to what's appropriate for you as an independent, living, mature, unique, worthy human being separate from your parents. 
it's useful. Another thing you can do is to learn to differentiate anger from frustration. I've made another video that helps you do that. The reason I'm saying this right now is if you find that you're angry with one of your relatives, it may be that you're not angry but you're frustrated. If you can separate those two, there are options for curing frustration that don't apply to anger. So learn to notice the difference between frustration and anger and how to deal with each of those two things. See the other YouTube video on this subject. Another thing you can do, many of us feel if we have critical judgments of certain relatives, we often feel uh, anxious and guilty because we are, quote, not supposed to criticize or disapprove of or confront or disagree with our relatives. That's what we were taught as children, many of us anyway. So that can produce the normal feeling of guilt. If guilt is excessive in your case with a troublesome relative, look at my video on how to manage excessive guilt. You have some really practical options for changing the rules that produce guilt. Often the rules that do, especially with family members, are long out of date. Upgrade the rules that you're using to judge your own behavior. That often will help you reduce significant guilt. So that's another thing you can do. It applies to all relationships, by the way. I encourage you to learn and use the Serenity Prayer and the Gestalt Prayer. You may not have heard of those or you may have heard of the first one. The first one, as you may know, has to do with recognizing things that you can change and things you cannot change and having the strength to accept the things you cannot change and to change the things you can. That is a paraphrase of the Serenity Prayer. There are some things you cannot change about your relatives. You can't heal their wounds. You can't make them nicer people. You can't make them more thoughtful or more sensitive or more humorous or want to spend more time with you. You can't change that. So the challenge for you too is to accept it with compassion. The Gestalt prayer, in effect, which comes to us from a master uh, psychologist named Fritz Perls, is briefly, I am I and you are you. I do my thing and you do your thing. I'm not in this world to meet your expectations and you're not in the world <clears throat> to meet mine. If we meet by chance, it's beautiful. If we don't, it can't be helped. Notice the theme of that compassionate poem, prayer, and apply it to your family members. It applies. The final recommendation I would make is, as you recognize things about your family members that you cannot control, you can't change, grieve lost hopes. If only I could find a way to talk with my father. If only my brother would feel more open and trusting to me. If only my grandmother would tell me about her childhood. If those things will never happen, it's useful to consciously grieve the loss of your dream. So you have many options to deal with problems with relatives. Diagnose yourself for wounds. Learn effective communication. Assess your expectations for reality. Learn the difference between anger and frustration. Many other things. I hope you'll study the related videos and apply what you've learned here. Thanks for watching.